Well, this month does mark 10 years since Russia annexed Crimea from Ukraine. Since then, Russia has continued to build up its military presence in the region, paving the way for the ongoing war. The fate of Crimea remains uncertain, deepening the dis- despair for its former residents. Magumi Lim has more from Kiev. It is my grandmother and I. <laughs> Ten years ago, Natalia Lutikova and her family fled the Crimean Peninsula where she was born and raised. They oh, took two suitcases and a stack of photo albums containing memories of their Crimean home. Before driving away, they stopped by the Black Sea to say goodbye. It is uh, water from Black Sea and stones from Black Sea, uh, from these places. Russian President Vladimir Putin annexed Crimea in March of 2014, turning Ukrainian territory into part of Russia almost overnight. The move came after months-long protests in Kyiv toppled a pro-Russian government. With Moscow's hold over Ukraine weakened, President Putin set out to take Crimea, a land he believed rightfully belonged to Russia. Russian soldiers without insignia called Little Green Men infiltrated the peninsula, taking control of key infrastructure and military bases. That set the stage for an illegal referendum, with the vast majority of Crimeans voting to join Russia. Hundreds of thousands of people who opposed Russian rule fled. Among them were the indigenous Crimean Tatars. They had lived in exile for decades after the Second World War, when Soviet Union authorities ejected them from their land. Many returned to Crimea after the USSR collapsed. But fearing persecution once more, they were forced to flee again. We spoke to Mustafa Jamilev, a former leader of the Crimean Tatars, exactly 10 years to the day he spoke to President Putin on the phone. If you really want something good for our people, immediately leave our territory. You are violating international law. These murals represent people who have been jailed in Crimea. Since its annexation, human rights groups say Moscow has been working to silence pro-Ukrainian voices. They believe that almost 80% of prisoners in Crimea are Crimean Tatars, even though they make up only about 13% of the population. Nazim Sedametov, one of the founders of the Crimean Tatar Cultural Center in Kyiv, says he wants to make sure his people's identity is not forgotten. That's what we are trying to uh, avoid and to keep the culture at least at the same level, not, uh, not to make it disappear completely. When Russia began its full-scale invasion of Ukraine in February 2022, Crimea became one of its launch pads, and it continues to be a major supply route for Russian troops. Ukrainian forces have stepped up their attacks on military targets on the peninsula in an effort to break Moscow's hold. The hope is that people such as Natalia Lutikova can one day return. With no end in sight to the war, photographs are all she has, for now, to picture Crimea free of Russian rule. Megumi Lim, CNA, 